In our continuing effort to keep you informed, we now go to the Emergency Broadcast Network. The years of testing are over. The phrase, an actual emergency, now is a reality. And we go, now. <laughs> Obviously, more technical trouble. Not surprising, we hope to Constance, are you there? We'll get you that message as soon as we can. Constance, I know you can hear me. I hear you breathing. People, somebody answer me! Is there a responsive person somewhere? Someone who could tell me a little story? John, what about all your animals? You had such enthusiasm. Don't we have duty? At least a curiosity? <laughs> I know we're all very tired. <laughs> to do this job was always my dream. To be trusted and turned to and believed in. Comforting, trusty, someone. But no, sorry, I didn't anchor anything. I get older every weeknight without change. The flashlight is dead. We are left darkly. Hi, Frank. I'm the uh, witness that John over here interviewed earlier. I've been uh, standing around this thing through the, uh, the uh, thing on the thing here. <laughs> Listen, I think you're great at what you do. You spoke at my school once. You seem nice. We listen for you. I do the stories and thoughts. I like the news. Everyone's waiting. Uh, <laughs> it seems there is no word. I guess not. I could say what I saw tonight. I'm not seasoned or eloquent like John and them, but I was there. I was standing around. This is my custom. It was sort of twilight. A plane went flying by. A plane did. And it made a trail across the sky. I stared like this. <laughs> a dog was barking at something. Someone was teaching a baby how to walk on the sidewalk. Lights started coming on with people coming home and all this stuff. This whole neighborhood stuff. I saw. <laughs> the night fell, like usual, but differently, sort of. This is all from what I saw. I thought it was pretty. What do I know? Except all that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. The man has produced an eloquent person. Well, uh, I don't know. I just hear word around the house, you know? Who knows? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm sorry. I'm very tired. I'm not well. I... Jesus. Jesus. Ironic. My awakening life would happen at night. But they haven't grown so tired, so sleepy and sick at all. <laughs> I know. The irony. Frank, once I saw the governor in person. He was filling his car up with gas and he was wearing shorts and sunglasses. True. <laughs> Either my mother or 
father always told me this one. Let's see. Once there was a world that had it all. You know? Everything in the world in it. Rocks, trees, animals, people, houses, government. All of it. It was great, everyone thought and felt. But then people started to imagine it getting ruined and run down. And then that started happening in reality. People started hurting and killing everyone. But then this little boy or girl was born that everyone loved due to their beauty. And the child said to everyone, I'd be scared too. So everyone was scared together. And all their worries about things turned into a sort of comfort. And all their doubts about things turned into a kind of fate, sort of. And then a bright white horse showed up, and then I always fell asleep. At the end, though, I bet my mother or father whispered, Sweet dreams. I can almost see them leaning over, pulling the sheets up, whispering something simple like that over me in my dark room. Good night. Sweet dreams, they whispered, because they love me. And it's nighttime, and they wanted to try to say something. Frank? Closed it. 